beach. He's made the sacred pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca seven times. Most of us are dying to get there just once. He's been to Kemet or Egypt seven times, to Jerusalem three times. Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad has lectured and organized around liberation in every major city, township in Azania or South Africa. Dr. Muhammad is a member of the Association for the Study of Classical African Civilization. Dr. Muhammad is a member of the Honorable Marcus Garvey UNIA African Communities League. He can be heard on Public Enemies Fight the Power and Vote the Death in the Life Side of Ice Cube's Death Certificate. Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad is the National Assistant to Minister Louis Farrakhan. And if you've ever wondered why Semitic history or Egyptian history was deleted from your world history class, understand that was no mistake. The European has for centuries been suspect and therefore hidden from us the knowledge that in Northern Africa, in ancient Egypt, lies the foundation and much of the history of all mankind. And it takes strong, knowledgeable, educated brothers who are committed like Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. So put your hands together, give a warm welcome to the National Assistant for Minister Louis Farrakhan, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. I I must say before I begin, uh, before I begin that I love that. Uh, I look forward to having one with a real blade. <laughs> In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. We give thanks to Almighty God, Allah, as it was written and prophesied that he would come seeking that which was lost. And we can find no other people fitting the description of the lost brother, the lost sister, or the lost sheep, except we, the 50 million or more mentally and spiritually dead black men and women here in the hells of North America. We thank Almighty God, Allah, for his Messiah, that one that we believe that the world has been waiting for. We believe that as one segment of the world is waiting for the Messiah, another segment of the world waiting for the Mahdi, we believe that that one has come and is present among us today. So we thank Almighty God, Allah, for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and for the apostle of the Messiah, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, whom we believe is that one anointed and appointed by Almighty God for the liberation and salvation of the black nation. And so I bring you greetings here in the city of Philadelphia to Sister Afria, to Brother Sekter Uanu, to Sister Fatima, to Brother Jerome, to Minister Rodney Muhammad, the Philadelphia representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and to our most God-gifted and talented brother, Brother James Pierce, who is here in our midst, and to all of you, my beloved and beautiful black brothers and sisters. I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Hotel. Alafia. Free the land and black laws for all black people. It is indeed, again, an honor to have these few moments with you to speak on ancient Kemet and to speak on the people of ancient Kemet. Now let us begin at the beginning. <laughs> we are taught of all of our studies, history is best qualified and most attractive to reward our research that if we know what happened yesterday, we can intelligently discuss today because today is built on yesterday and tomorrow is built on today. And if we know what happened, if we know what went down yesterday, then we're not likely to let the same
same thing go down today. Right. Brother James, I believe it's in the Masonic order and among the Eastern Star and among the Shriners and among the heroines of Jericho and the daughters of the Amorites and they, where they tell us about a man who was hit in the head at the East Gate. Right. He was hit in the head at the East Gate, the Masons and the Eastern Stars say, right. and he was carried on a westerly course. Yes, he was buried under an old rubbish heap yes, in the north corner or the northwest corner where there is no light. Mm -hmm. He was struck a blow to the head, Brother James, that rendered him dead. All right. But he was buried in a shallow grave. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a deep grave. He was buried in a shallow grave. That's right. And all that was necessary was that light would enter into the grave and someone would come with the master grip that wouldn't slip. That's someone it. would come with the lion's paw or the master a grip, the lion's paw or the eagle's claw and raise him or her from a dead level to a living perpendicular and stand him and her upright on the square that they would form right angles and perpendiculars reaching upward to God Almighty. Right. And so we are that people mm -hmm. who were hit in the head at the East Gate Africa, right. carried on a westernly course right. and brought here to the west in the hells of North America and buried under the filth, immorality, indecency, freakishness, licentiousness of the Western world. Right. But it's a shallow grave. Yes. And so in ancient Kemet, called by the Greek, the freaks, called Egypt. Yes. But when we study the etymological root of the term Egypt from Aeptus, Aeptus in Greek means black. Yes. But when we study not only from the Greek, the freaks, but when we study in the ancient hieroglyphics or the holy writings that are written on the sacred walls or the Medunetur, yes. when we study the Medunetur or the holy writings on the sacred temples of ancient Kemet, yes. we will find that the symbol for Kemet is a charred, burnt piece of wood. Right. A charred, burnt, black piece of wood. So when you say Kemet, you're saying black. Yeah. Right. And as there's a group going around today talking about anti-Semitism, <laughs> we want to advance the term here tonight of anti-Kemitism. Right. These anti-Kemites, <laughs> these anti-Kemites, anti-black, against black, these anti-Kemites who practice plagiarism and lying and robbing and pillaging and ransacking and who actually steal and rob from us and add it to the pages of their history book and then walk around sticking their, their little bony chest out to the world, making the world believe that they are the father and mother of civilization and the father and mother of everything. I'm the voice that you hear on Ice Cube's new album, Death Certificate. On the life side, the voice that comes in that says the black man and the black woman have no birth record, no beginning and no ending. Right. Before Alpha, not Alpha and Omega, no. but before Alpha and after Omega. Yes. History and history records that the black man and the black woman, I go on to say in words, is the father and mother of morality, the father and mother of ethics, the father and mother of music and law and art and science and government, the father and mother of mathematics and geometry and civilization itself, the father and mother, brothers and sisters, of all of the disciplines of the earth. If there were no black man and woman, there could be no brown man and woman. If there were no black man and woman, there could be no red man and woman, no yellow man and woman, and yet, if there were no black man and woman, there could be no white man and woman. That's right. The black man and woman is absolutely the father and mother of every people on the face of the planet Earth. But a people who have been robbed of a knowledge of self. As the Bible says, these are a people robbed and spoiled. They are snared and 
holes and hidden in prison houses, a people so robbed and spoiled until we are a people who are almost completely brainwashed. They style us in the scriptures as a dead people, completely brainwashed to the degree, as you hear me on Public Enemy's album, coming in after Flavor Flav, and just before Chuck D comes in with This Is A Dope Jam, and after Flav does, she watched Channel Zero. I'm the voice that you hear that says, have you forgot that when we were brought here, we were robbed of our name, robbed of our language. We lost our religion, our culture, our God, and many of us, by the way we act, we even lost our mind. And that is indeed the state and the condition that we are in as a people. Written on the ancient temples of higher learning and enlightenment as I started this point. Written and inscribed on the front of these ancient temples of higher learning and enlightenment is the inscription, no thyself. Know thyself. Now I know the Greek, the freak, wants you to believe that Socrates is responsible for know thyself. Before Socrates was a gleam or a twinkle in his mama's eye, we had already built the sacred temples of higher learning and enlightenment. Know thyself. Why know thyself? And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan say that a knowledge of self is relative to everything else. Right. I'll repeat, a knowledge of self is relative to everything else. Right. If you have lost your primary frame of knowledge, which is your knowledge of self, you can't put everything else in its proper perspective. Right. If you bump your head and go into a state of amnesia and you don't know who you are, they can bring your mother in front of you, your father in front of you. You won't know your mother and your father. They can bring your loved ones in front of you. You won't know your loved ones because you've lost your primary frame of reference, which is a knowledge of yourself, and you're in a state of amnesia. They can bring your enemies in front of you, and you will jump up and try to kiss and hug your enemy, and you may jump up and try to attack your friends or your relatives or your loved ones because your primary frame of reference is out of focus. That's right. But as soon as you, it dawns on you, and as soon as you snap back to yourself, mm -hmm. and as soon as that primary frame of reference is back in clear perspective and focus, then you know friends, then you know enemies, then you know relatives, then you know loved ones, and you can put everything again back in its proper place. Right. But to know thyself is the primary frame of reference. I contend here tonight as a freer that the black man and the black woman, that we represent close to 50 million amnesia victims. Oh, right. We are close to 50 million amnesia victims. Ask us our name, we give you a white man's name. That's right. Ask us our name, we give you a white woman's name. Right. All kinds of names. Harry McGillicuddy, <laughs> Jim Dandy O'Houlihan, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln Culpepper. <laughs> Had it made hamburger with lettuce, lettuce and tomatoes on the side. <laughs> Mr. Greenleaf, Mr. Orangeburg, Mr. Muddy Waters by the Steel Water. <laughs> Miss, as black as some of us are. Some of us are so black and beautiful until we're blue black. So black and beautiful until we're purple black. Blacker than our 150 million midnight. All right. Mm.
carried on here to awaken our people and take us into a greater knowledge of self. That's right. Thanks to Minister Rodney Muhammad, the representative of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan here in the city. Thanks to Brother James, who with the stroke of the brush and paint keeps us forever reminded of who we are and where we came from right. and consequently gives us some focus and direction on where we are going. And so, brothers and sisters, robbed completely mm. of a knowledge of self puts us in a state where we don't even believe that it's important to know our ancient history. Right. Dr. Sheikh Anta Diop, Dr. Sheikh Anta Diop says that Ethiopia and Egypt or Ethiopia and Kemet are to black Africa and the African world what Greece and Rome is to white Europe. Right. I repeat, mm -hmm. Dr. Sheikh Anta Diop says that Ethiopia and Kemet or Egypt, that they are to Africa and the black world what Greece and Rome is to the white world. There would be no Christianity if it were not for the black man and black woman. That's right. I don't care how you try to follow white folks in Europe, brothers and sisters, and white folks in America for your religion. There would be no Christianity if it were not for Africa. Right. If it were not for the souls of black folks, there would be no Christianity. I believe in Jesus. But I believe in a black Jesus That's Christ. Right. That's right. I believe in a Jesus that the Bible says would have hair like lamb's wool. That's right. You know what I'm talking about. That's right. I'm talking about that good hair. That's right. I'm talking about that nappy stuff. Yeah. Before you got your temporary purse. Yeah. You're paying full price for something that you know is temporary and you know it ain't gonna even last. But they saw you coming and charge you full price for a temporary permit. The Bible says Jesus, the black revolutionary Messiah, would have hair like lamb's wool, that nappy hair, before you got your scary curl. You know what I'm talking about. Before you got your blonde wig that's sitting crooked on top of your silly black nappy hair. The Bible says he would have hair like lamb's wool. Nappy hair, strong hair, dominant hair. And his body, one scripture says, would be like burl. Another scripture says his body would be like jasper. Another scripture says his body would be like burnt brass, as though it had been burnt in an oven. So the Jesus that I'm talking to you about is a black man with nappy hair. Don't you bring me no blonde haired blue-eyed, pale-skinned, buttermilk complexion, pecker wood Jesus. Take the cracker Jesus off of your wall when you leave a friend and you've had the proper physical food, then you go home to establish the spiritual atmosphere in your home. Take them crackers off of your wall. Jesus is not a white man. Jesus is black. That's right. Take those 12 crackers off your wall. You call them the Last Supper. They don't eat here in a bread. 12 crackers and you call it the Last Supper. Hell, no wonder we hungry in Philadelphia. You didn't get nothing to eat that day. Nothing but 12 white folks eating that day. And you say, well, well, if you were there, you must have been in the kitchen. And you didn't make the photo shoot. White angels on your wall. Fat, pudgy, white women with nightgowns on and some KFC Ken Kentucky Fried Cracker Wings on their back. <laughs> Flying around. Oh, you got some cracker on your dashboard. Talking about this is the patron of the highway. It got more dents and one of your headlights is out and your fenders are bent up and you wonder why in the hell you always running into something or something is running into you. And you got this cracker on your dashboard looking at you with his cold blue eyes every day. Christianity would not exist if it were not for the black man and black woman. All right. We can go back to the sacred temple of Seti Wan in the, in the sacred city or the holy city of Abidos mm -hmm. yeah. where major pilgrimage was made, were made to the holy city of Abidos yeah. and we will talk about the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca and what the sacred pilgrimage of Mecca have to do with the sacred pilgrimage in Abidos. Yeah. But in the holy city of Abydos, in the sacred temple of Seti One, yes. you can read in the holy writings or the hieroglyphics of the ancient people of Kemet, you can read the original story or the creation story that was plagiarized and robbed from us, oh. and now we see it in a mixed up, fixed up, doctored up version. We see it half baked, half fried, sissy 
crucified, punkified, pasteurized, and homogenized, and given back to us in a dead letter print, in a dead letter scripture, and a dead religion that is a slave church. When a slave preacher, I'm talking about Reverend Ham Hock, I'm talking about Reverend Doc Pope Chop, I'm talking about Reverend Hog Maw with the chitlin' juice running down his jaw. I'm talking about these Negro preachers that graduated from the theological cemeteries or seminaries of the white man where they bury the true knowledge of the true and living God. Sissies in the pulpit, you got some good pastors who are good shepherds, but they're hard to find that follow the example of the good shepherd, the black revolutionary messiah, right. Jesus. That's right. Most of them are just hirelings, as the Bible says, and they're in the hip pocket of the white man. That's right. All right. And they pull you in the pit with them every Sunday, yes, sir. and it's turned into a Sunday morning disco, right. a feel-good session. Right. Many of them are homosexual. Right. Sissies, standing up in the pulpit, honey. Yes. Praise the Lord, honey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holding the Bible funny. Yes. Turning the pages funny. Tell and talking about, hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man, honey. And that's just what they want is a man. Christianity would not exist if it were not for the souls of black people, Kemetic people from ancient Africa, as it is called today. But before the night is over, we've got to examine this term Africa. All right. Before the night is over, we've got to examine this new term, African America. All right. Where you think you put down one white term to pick up a black term, but you really put down a white term and picked up two white terms, but right. so we'll get a little deeper into that yes, before sir. the evening is over. Yes, you with me? Yes, sir. Yo, what's up? Everybody all right? Everybody all right? I was, my sister Fati Fatima was telling me that the food here is light. That if you add, well, I add to what she was saying, that if you, if you gain a pound here, you know it's a good pound. It's a good healthy pound if you gain any weight here, so your head should be light. You shouldn't be weighed down by the food. Your attention span should be all right. That's yes, right. And your focus should be very clear. So let's get back to black. Let's go blackwards to the beginning. And as we go blackwards to the beginning and blackwards to Kemet, we will find that as we study Christianity deeper and deeper, the Psalms of David, the Proverbs of the Scripture, as we study from Genesis to Revelation, from one cover to the other, we will be able to find the root of the Bible on the walls of ancient Kemet in the holy writings or the hieroglyphics. Right. The Ten Commandments, one of the foundational pillars of Christianity, That's right. comes to us from the, from the uh, Declaration of Innocence of Maya. All the right. Declaration of Innocence of Maya where we say, I have not committed murder. Mm -hmm. I have not coveted my neighbor's wife. I have not robbed my neighbor. I have not so-and-so, so-and-so. We always said, I have not done. Mm -hmm. But the white man couldn't deal with 47. Or in another sense, as you study throughout, 147. Right. He couldn't deal with that, so he just took 10. And haven't been able to deal with the ten. Right. Hell, what would he have done with all of them? <laughs> if we see what he's done with just ten of them, calling them the Ten Commandments from the Declaration of Innocence of Maya. Now that we're on Maya, and there's so much talk about justice now, we need to talk a little bit more about Maya. All right. Maya, that ancient African system of belief. <laughs> Maya that ancient African system of morality and spirituality and ethics. Yes. Maya, truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, yes. balance, order, and reciprocity. Yes. Maya, as we understand the harmony of the spheres and the balance in the cosmos. And you see Dr. Maulana Karanga, who has rescued and reconstructed a bit of our history and given us the Kusia the authoritative utterance of 
the originator and creator of all of this as it was gathered from the sacred and ancient writings. He, gives, he has given us Kwanzaa, and he's given us the seven principles of the moral minimum value system called the Incluso Saga. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, he has given us a working definition. You still with me? Yes, sir. A working definition for black. That's right. Dr. Maulana Karanga teaches us that black is color, culture, and consciousness. What is black? Talk back to me. And with his permission, I have added that black is color, culture, consciousness, and a corresponding cosmic connection. That black is color, culture, consciousness, and a corresponding cosmic connection. How you hook up with the God? How you hook up with the universe? How you hook up with the cosmos? How you hook up with the Netter system that is behind and the prime moving force of the universe? Color, culture, consciousness, and a corresponding cosmic connection. That's black. It's not just color. You gotta go deeper than the color. That's right. It's not just culture. You gotta go deeper than culture. That's right. It's not just consciousness. You gotta go deeper than consciousness. And as you go deeper and deeper and get off of this branch knowledge, Elijah Muhammad, and we'll talk a lot about Elijah Muhammad tomorrow night at the debate with this devil over at uh, Zara United Methodist Church <laughs> in the debate on El Hajj Malik. El Shabazz or Minister Malcolm X's birthday, as this is the eve of Malcolm's birthday. We'll talk about this man, Elijah Muhammad. We'll talk about this man, Louis Farrakhan. They teach us root knowledge. That's right. Because we believe that branch knowledge divides us. If you get hung out on one of these branches, right. you'll tear your pants or you'll tear your ass, somebody, if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Somebody, if you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you'll tear something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You've got to go down the trunk of the tree of wisdom to the root knowledge. That's right. Don't be on the branches arguing with each other. I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Mason. I'm an Elk. I'm an Eastern Star. I'm a Moose. Oh, you're a turkey. <laughs> I'm Democrat. I'm a Republican. Right. I'm partisan. I'm nonpartisan. I'm Omega Psi Phi. I'm Kappa Alpha Psi. I'm Alpha Phi Alpha. I'm Sigma uh, uh, Phi Beta Sigma. I'm Delta Sigma Theta. I'm Alpha Kappa Alpha. I'm Sigma Gamma Rho. I'm Z Phi B C me. I'm a white collar worker. Yeah. I'm a blue collar worker. Right. I'm a nigga with no shirt on. Yeah. I mean, we're just as divided as we can be. Yeah. This, yeah. Is the, uh, this is the Asarian, as the devil calls Os uh, Osiris. Yeah. This is the Asarian line of division. Right. We have been split up into many different parts. Many. We have been set upon by these anti-Kimites. Yes, right. Who have 